In this video, we're going to look at log4j and some basic uh, problems, some troubleshooting you'll uh, run into. And we're going to look at specifically about log levels, so the troubleshooting with log levels. What do I mean by that? Well, if you go to the log4j node and you go to basic and you have it set up, say, like this, where you're giving it the full, fully qualified path and you leave all the defaults, so you've got debug, uh, with this being the only change. Now, why am I using that specifically? Well, it's because if you go to page 16 of the log4j uh, sort of user's guide, you'll see that the log text they suggest if you want to look at root with using an xpath, uh, which means just simply um, e using this sort of, kind of language to look at the contents, uh, xpath being that language, look at the contents of your message. Well, if you set this up, log text my message and use this dollar slash dollar, what you're going to get, if you leave everything else um, the same, notice logger name is default, is, uh, well, let's, what do you get? So this is, this is the question, right? So if I deploy this, which I've already done, so I'm just, you know, dragging my bar file on top of this integration node, integration server, and now I go look at my files that have been generated. And by that, what I mean is if I go to my broker log, so this is exactly the same path that we were just looking at. This is the fully qualified path. Um, and actually, you can see that too. Let me show you. Read link broker log. So there, that's the same path we saw in our node, uh, the log4j node. So if I open that file, what you're going to see, this is a nice way to run Vim without using the mouse to copy and paste the path, um, is this file, right? So we've got var mqsi log, and I've got my log listed here. And I'll let you sort of read through this. But the, the important parts are here, right? So we've, if, I, if I'm running this appender called file default, and by the way, if appenders are strange uh, sort of concept to you, look at a previous video where we talked about appenders and the architecture for log4j, and, and then come back. This then this is this is a different appender for the file other and what you're going to notice and let me also before we go into that let's go down here and look at the loggers so we're seeing a default logger now that should look familiar because remember we saw logger name here as default so that's what we're seeing here right we have our logger set as default and what the interesting thing here for us in this video is this level value so we're seeing the level set here as warn and if we go up to our appenders you're going to see that all of these are set to warn and what's interesting here is that if i try to put a message in our queue and get some output so what i mean by that is if i hit ll all of these are set to zero i've got no output in any of them if you want to get output in them uh you need to well let's just see what happens let's try it so I'm going to load rfhutil, and I've got, this is my in queue, that's, it corresponds to the MQ input here. So I'm going to do a write queue, we're going to see a message put into that queue. Now I have debugging turned on, yours probably won't have that, it shouldn't have that. I'm going to let that message um, flow through here, and now, hit terminate, and then now we should see some output, right? So I'm going to go to rfhutil, and I've got my queue here. This queue corresponds to the MQ input queue. Then I'm going to click on write queue, so we see a message was written there. And so what should we expect? Well, if I come here and I hit an LL, we should see content listed under one of these, right? But we don't, and the question is, well, why not? And the answer is actually on the screen right now. Look at the threshold value. It's set for warn just like the threshold value here is set for warn and this set here for warn. But that is not what we put on our log level. We put log level at debug and instead we need that to say warn. Now if I were to just hit save here and try to re put another message on the queue, we're not going to get any output. And the reason for that is because remember we need to, up we just updated the message flow. We need to update the corresponding bar file. So I'm gonna double click here and we are going to the manage tab and then we're going to click here for rebuild and save the bar click on ok that updates the bar file remember and now we're going to drag the bar file onto the integration server so we can redeploy the bar file and now we should see uh, a new result so if I go back to RFH util and I write the queue let's take a look and we'll do an LL and what do we see 
and we'll do an LL and what do we see there is a my log default so that's great now what does it look like here we go this is my test message and, and notice too that this is a warn level uh, and you'll see okay my test message along with and then now you get a string representation of the xpath version of or basically all the data in your message but of course it's written out as a string message as warn now warn is important remember that in or i should say on page five of the log 4j uh, users guide that's the pdf you'll see this information about logger config well if you do an image search online you will see that there is such a, a something called a level hierarchy so that's the debug level hierarchy in log4j and that the top of the hierarchy which is not really explained really well in this pdf but better through this through this sort of image at the top you have this fatal and then you go down from there some from fatal to error to warrant to info to, de to debug and to trace and trace is going to give you the most amount of detail that's why it's the base of this pyramid and fatal will give you the least amount of detail so and you'll see that over here too now that's important because we had talked about a threshold and the threshold remember is defined here in our broker log.xml and we're seeing the threshold of warn and what that means is that the threshold of warn will show you everything from warn and above so you'll get warn you'll get error and you'll get fatal but you won't get things that are lower than that because this is more detail and in a production environment or any environment where you don't want to see that sort of thing you won't get it so the threshold is referring to what's at that level and higher in the hierarchy so now the question is if i were to go back to my log4j node and i go to basic and i switch this from remember we were on warn and now i switch it over to info and then without doing anything else uh you know maybe save the message flow if you want but without doing anything else if i then go to rfc util and i write the uh, message into that same queue what would you expect to see and if you look at the results here if i go to my log default we will now see an additional warn message but not an info and that's because we need to redeploy our bar file okay so once again let's do that let's go into the bar file we'll go here to update our bar file i'll click ok and we will redeploy it onto our node okay and now let's put another message back on the queue so right queue and let's do an ll and we'll go back in to my log default and we don't see any updates here and that makes sense right because we selected info and we're going you know that that's not the right direction to go right let's let me show you so we have debug info and we have info debug and trace so debug info we don't even see trace actually in this list this is simply saying that basically our pyramid and this log level box are essentially inverted so if you select info um, and you and you have it set at a threshold of warn well that's just too low and we're not going to get any information on the other hand if you went to error that should work so let's try that so i'm going to hit Control s to save it and then i'll reload the bar file i will rebuild and save that bar file then redeploy it onto the integration server and now put another message on to the queue and now let's look ll and we'll go into my log default and now we're getting an error message so this is this is new so hopefully that clears things up a little bit about how the log thresholds work and what the log levels are and what the, how they relate to those thresholds.